Tough Africa Global brings you state-of-the-art commercial and retail spaces available for rent at Madiba Mall, located at the Proofwood Gardens Estate. Our commercial spaces comes with facilities such as 24-hour security, standby backup generator, air conditioning, shared conference room, and personal cash pour meters. If you are looking for a spacious and suitable business environment, look no further. Madiba Mall retail and commercial spaces are just what you need. Ocean View offers spaces with limited availability. Call us today and secure a space. For more information, contact 733-3363 or 594-1053 or email at info at topafricaglobal.com. allow um, Mr. Jagana to also uh, deliver his lecture and then we'll open the floor. Actually we've gained time with her. We normally look for about 30 minutes from them. Um, so let's allow Mr. Jagana to come in and then from there we can open the floor and since it's Ramadan today I guess there's no rush to go and have lunch. So we can be here as long as we want, isn't it? Okay, great. So give a round of applause for uh, Mr. Jack, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mohamed Jagana. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. My background is more from an accountant. Uh, I joined our family business a couple of years ago and saw an opportunity and started my own business. Some of them fail, some of them succeed. And along the way, I am here today talking to you about futuristic vision. Just want to explain a little bit about futuristic vision and elaborating on the importance of a successful leader's ability to have a clear and informed vision of the future. And when we talk about leadership, it doesn't have to be anything, but it could be even leadership from your own perspective. It is a great pleasure and honor to come back with Team Tough Leadership Academy and give this lecture once again. I believe this is my third one or so. I have ever convinced myself that those who will take this country forward are you, the youth. And today I can see that my hopes are renewed once again because we have young women here in the hall. Today and any other day from now, you who gather here have taken up the responsibility to change what is bad to good, what is good to better, and what is better to the best for this country. I will paraphrase the words of Edmund Burke. And like Professor Ramu said, I tell me the sentiment that occupies the heart of a rising population, and I will tell you the characters of the future and your future as a nation. With your determination and the belief that you have in the Gambia, it gives me hope to muster the courage and tell the world that the sentiments that occupies the heart and mind of this rising population today is going to change the narratives for a better Gambia. And I want everybody here to raise their hand and pledge that they want to contribute towards a better Gambia. Thank you. What is futuristic? It's something from the future, very modern, which we have not seen yet. It can come in forms of a dream, ideas, or concepts. What is, what is vision? The ability to see sight or sight. Something that you can imagine, a picture that you see in your mind whether you are asleep, whether you are eating, or whether you are walking, but you could see this picture in your mind. You have this vision that one day you'll be flying to somewhere in your own self-built plane or whatever it is. Something that you can see or dream. Visions are inner body guards that prevents you from collapsing your future in the process of building it. Ladies and gentlemen, the response from a blind person when asked, 
what is worse than being blind? And please, I would love you to listen to this very carefully. He said, then this is the response from Helen Keller. Is having a sight with no vision. Can you imagine that? Having a sight with no vision. That is worse than being blind. And that's coming from a blind lady. Visionary leadership is self-conquering. If you are able to conquer yourself from fears, if you are to spot your position in the, your quest for greatness, then you are trudging on the right path for self-knowledge, which is the beginning of becoming an effective leader. And once again, I'll quote Professor Ramu, reading helps you develop self-knowledge. The first ayah that was dropped to the prophet was not Salat, it was Iqra, read, learn. We should assume that a leader with strength of futuristic vision would have an incredible ability to see the future. This ability to see and explain the future is what draws them forward and exerts them to pursue great accomplishments by putting together a team that share the same values and culture to achieve the team goals. That is very important. You need to share your values and culture with the team to achieve your goals. Futuristic leaders should have the ability to look the past, to look at past events of today and the possibilities of tomorrow. They can visualize new ideas, concepts, market about customers, products, services, strategies, and business models. Successful leaders will need to think further into the future and implement ideas in a timely manner to remain competitive in a world that is changing faster than we can understand. They would be equipped with the ability to imagine, envision, and predict, to some extent, project what has been realized or thought of at the moment. Futur futuristic thinking is a key ingredient for any leader who wants to be effective in holding a long-term strategic plan. Whether you're running a business or a household or a nation, you have to have a long-term vision and a plan. And you have to be able to look ahead to know what you want tomorrow and start thinking about it today. Today, we consider futuristic leaders, when we consider futuristic leaders, two names pop up amongst the list. And these names have changed industries that has gone beyond their own imagination. And one is Henry Ford, the other is Steve Jobs. When Henry Ford started the car business, he said you can have it in any color you want, so long as it's black. They are excellent examples of visionaries who disrupted their industries, and today they are legendary. Today, any, of, any one of you here could develop their own futuristic thinking skills and set the narratives for a major change that would impact lives of millions all over the world. Henry Ford grew up in a farm, not in a city like you people. So you even have a competitive advantage that he doesn't have. You just have to build a strong vision of your own and think out of the box. Sometimes don't follow people. Create your own route. It's possible. You just have to believe in one person, and that is you. Then you can get that futuristic vision done. By the way, being around naysayers can have a negative effect, a limiting effect on you. So you need to fly with birds that see the sky as blue, not the ones that see it as green or gray, or it might rain. Some few features of futuristic leaders. One of them is visionary. It's important. The ability to look at the big picture and not caught up or held down by existing conditions is critical. And I suppose when Mustafa Anjai sat down with his team and said, look, we're going to build a whole new city, twice the size of Banjul, some of the guys were like, huh? MD, is that so? But he had the vision in his mind. And today when you go to Tough City, you'll see it. The ability to use your imagination to lay down detailed visions of what is and what ought to be. Everybody of us today have seen what the iPhone and Apple has done in the telephone technology industry. 
you have to be able to take risk. Sometimes you just have to close your eyes and jump. But great leaders of all times have one time or do take great risk in order for you to become what you want to. You have to be a risk taker. Sacrifice what appears to be great for what is even greater until you are ready to sacrifice what will not last for what will last. Then you are most likely not ready to be your best. Sacrifice is critical and taking risk. In as much as I say you need to take risk, I would advise you that you always take calculated risk. If you're going to jump out of a 10-story building, make sure you have a good parachute in case of <laughs> your strategy fails. You put on the parachute and land safely. You have to be fearless. You have to have the ability to challenge the status quo and demand questions as it is not happening. To use your curiosity to invest on a better future that can only happen if you break barriers. If you follow the status quo, you're not going to break barriers. If everybody's walking right, you decide to see, let me walk backwards or walk left, you might find, find something new and people will start walking backwards. Make sure you lead the team to understand business as usual stuff will not cut it if you want to exist and stay relevant. This is what John F. Kennedy did on the race to the moon. He gathered the American public and told them that we are going to land a man in the moon before the end of the decade, and they did it. You need to have the expertise or put together the expertise. The ability to put together a team that will constantly collect and analyze current trends and project potential future businesses and markets is critical. It is important for you as a leader to have your finger on the pulse of the business and the industry you are participating. That's a quote from Henry Ford. You need to know where the industry is going. You have to be proactive. Visionary leaders cannot be late. They cannot be falling asleep whilst they're sitting on the leadership role. The ability to set aside time to think and reflect on your vision rather than being swallowed by day-to-day -day tasks and lose sight of the bigger picture is critical. So you have to be able to sit and take time on your own and dream more about your vision and fine-tune it in your dreams and see how to implement it. That is why it is important that you set aside time for thoughtful contemplation. This should allow you as a leader to reflect on the possible long-term effects of your decisions, which can help you determine which direction to take to solve the pr possible challenges and effectively plan and strategize for successful implementation of your vision. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you a simple story, and I would recommend all of you to read this book. The story of Babylon and the richest man in Babylon. Babylon was a kingdom in ancient Mesopotamia, founded around 2300 BC. The city was built on the Euphrates River, and at the time it was the richest city and had some of the wealthiest people in the world. This is from two, in 200, 2300 BC. Babylon was located in what is today the modern Iraq. The glory of Babylon endures down through the ages. Its reputation comes to as the richest city in the world. The, its treasures were fabulous. There was gold all over the place. Wealthy people living so wealthy in those days, it's unbelievable. It is, it was not always so, the richest city. And the result of it become the richest city came about from the vision and the wisdom of the king of Babylon. When King Sargon returned to Babylon after defeating his enemies, the Elamites, he was confronted with a serious situation as a leader. He was worried. He could not sleep. So he called in the royal chancellor to explain why the problem. The royal chancellor is like currently what we would call the minister of finance, the person responsible for the economic affairs. 
And the royal chancellor explained to the king as follows. After many years of great prosperity to our people because your majesty had the vision to build the great irrigation canals and mighty temples of God. Now these works are completed and the people are unable to support themselves because they spend so much money building canals and temples. The king was spending a lot of money, so he was floating in the economy. When, that, when those projects finished, there was no jobs. People were not able to make money. The laborers without, are without employment. The merchants were, had few customers because if without employment, they had no money to spend. The farmers are unable to sell their produce, and the people have not enough gold to buy food. Those days, the currency was gold. The king wondered, where has all the gold gone that he spent for these great improvements in the city? It has found its way, the chancellor says, into the possession of few rich men of the city. It filtered through the fingers of most people as quickly as goat's milk goes through a strainer. Now, the stream of gold has ceased to flow because of the lack of economic activity. Most of our people have nothing for their earnings. After some reflection, the king asked why so few men are able to acquire all the gold. This is the most interesting part, and we need to listen to it carefully. The chancellor responded, they know how. And one may not condemn a man for succeeding because he knows how. By the way, I'm using the context man because in those days, it was the right word to use. So when I say man, I mean men and women here. My apologies. <laughs> Neither may one with justice take away from man what he has fairly earned to give to men of less ability. But why, demanded the king, he wanted to a solution. Should not all the people learn how to accumulate gold and therefore become themselves rich and prosperous? So the king's vision was to make sure that everyone in Babylon is rich and prosperous. So he was thinking about it and brought his team to come up with a solution. The chancellor said, it is possible, your excellency, but who can teach them? Certainly not the priest, but they know not of making money. The king asked the chancellor, who knows best in the city how to become wealthy? Where well, I want Babylon to build the wealthiest city in the world. The chancellor responded, who has amassed the greatest wealth in Babylon? Akrat is the richest man in Babylon. Akrat knew how to turn things around and make money. The king requested Akrat to be brought before him. Akrat obliged and showed up. And upon arrival the next morning, the king asked Akrat, is it true thou art the richest man in Babylon? Akrat being cocky, said, so it is reported, your majesty and no man disputes it. Yes, I am the richest man in Babylon. And the king turned around and said, how did you become so wealthy? And is it possible to avail to our citizens and our good city the strategies and the options that you apply to be so wealthy? After a long discussion, it was agreed by Akra that he would teach men on how to acquire and accumulate gold. The king was so excited because now his vision of getting his citizens rich was becoming a reality. And teaching of secrets of wealth acquisition is a possibility because somebody in the city knows how to do it. But it's the king that had the vision to turn the city into the wealthier city. That's why he pursued that goal. Akrat emphasized and reassured the king it's practical that which one man knows can be taught to others. But the other has to have the ability and the determination to learn. And I think that is critical. You can teach somebody something, 
but they have to have the determination and ability to learn. The king was delighted that in the near future, his vision of a city of wealthy men would be achieved. The king's eyes glowed and Accra Do spoke in the words, I wish to hear. Will Do lend Thai self to this great cause? Will Do teach Thai knowledge to a school for teachers, each of whom shall teach others until they are enough trained to teach these truths to every worthy subject in my domain? That is what we call today transfer of knowledge. But in as much, much as you want to transfer knowledge, the person has to have the ability and willingness to absorb it. Agrad agreed to, to contribute towards the vision of the king and asked the chancellor to arrange a class of 100 men. And he, Agrad, would teach them these secrets or cures to fatten a pause. A fortnight later, in compliance with the king's command, the chosen hundred assembled in the great hall of the temple of learning seated upon colorful rings in semicircle. So this just reminds me when Taft first mentioned to me the Taft Leadership Academy, and he wanted to bring, what, 50 people. Today we're aiming at 500, and hopefully within a decade we'll be training 5,000 young people how to be leaders of this country and the future generation. Akrat sat beside a small tabouret upon which a smoke-scared lamp sending forth a strange and pleasing Odo, standing in front of 100 eager men, Akrat opened the training with the following statement. As a dutiful subject of our great king, I stand before you in his service, because once I was a poor youth who did greatly desire gold, and because I found the knowledge that enabled me to acquire it, he asked that I impart unto you my knowledge. And this is what Taf has been doing through the Leadership Academy, bringing people that have the experience to talk to you, to help you path, design your path, and help you clean up your vision so that you can have a future that is suitable to your needs. Akrat, over the next couple of nights, would share his knowledge of gaining wealth through seven steps, which, if followed by any of the attendees, they could attain goal like Akrat and be rich. Akrat concluded the lessons with the following statement. Start time pursuit to fatten. Control your expenditures. Make Thai gold multiply. Cut Thai treasures from loss. Make of Thai dwelling a profitable investment. Ensure future income and increase the ability to earn more from what you invested. Go do forth and teach these truths that every honorable subject of this majesty may also share liberally in ample wealth of our beloved city. So as you can see, he guided them and gave them steps to follow. So following steps and processes is critical in achieving your vision. It's critical in being a futuristic leader. You cannot have a shortcut. There's no shortcut to it. You can jump from that veranda to here. It is quicker, but you might end up with um, amputated legs. Or you can go through the long way of going down the steps. The above story is from the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, by George Escalation. And it was published in 1926 in a book form. It's not like it was published 10 years ago. This is almost 100 years ago when they published this story. As we saw from the story, a visionary leader must have the passion, the will, and the discipline to lead. They must have the, they want the creative and develop necessary knowledge required to achieve the long-term vision and goal set. The individual is expected to inspire his people to interpret his vision and execute the plan over a period of time. We expect a futuristic leader to have certain characteristics that will be employed to inspire the team to greatness. And this includes simple steps. You have to be a great communicator. If you want to talk about your vision and the future, 
You have to be able to communicate to people, talk to them, convince them, get into their head. The leader needs to have great communication skills to transfer his vision in a belief factor to the team. Where if your team doesn't believe in you, you have a problem. The leader has to be charismatic. The leader has to have a charisma that will carry the team and give them confidence. At the end of the day, you're in front of the team and they're looking forward to hearing what you say. So you need to have that charisma to give them the confidence that we can cross this ocean, we will not drown. Although you might be scared, but you should be able to present to them that confidence for them to believe in what you're saying. You have to be organized. The leader has to be structured and organized. Hence, certain best practices to be followed. You cannot be a leader if you're not organized. You cannot tell people that the meeting starts at 11 and you show at 11.30. All of you that were here before, so the time Mr. Njai came, so the time Professor came, so the time I came, because we agreed that we're going to start at 11, and at 1100 hours we started. You have to take risk. You have to plan strategically. Futuristic leaders are celebrated well beyond their lifespan. And some of the most known well today, I'll just quote a few. Abraham Lincoln. He was an American lawyer and politician who served as the 16th president of the U United States and was assassinated in 19 1861. Lincoln led the U.S. through the Civil War, one of the bloodiest war and its greatest moral and constitutional political crisis that shaped the America we talked about today. But these were things that were done over 200 years ago. In doing so, he preserved the union and advocated for the abolishment of slavery, strengthened the federal government, and modernize the economy. And today, the American citizens and the world are benefiting from his vision and leadership. His leadership is enjoyed all over the world today. Warren Buffett is an American business magnate, investor, speaker, and philanthropist who served as CEO and chairman of Berkshire Hathaway. is considered one of the most successful investors in the world. When I first did my first lecture, his net worth in 2018 stood at $84 billion. Yesterday, when I was updating my speech, his net worth stood at $125 billion. And by the way, he's been giving away a whole chunk of this money, but he's still accumulating. Steve Jobs, we all knew, maybe some of you might be too young, but who knows what was the most famous telephone before the iPhone? This is a quick, huh? Who? Motorola, name another one. Nokia. No, not Samsung. Samsung just came after. It was Motorola and Nokia. So when Steve Jobs started the iPhone, they laughed at him. But today, that's history. We know what happened. He has changed the world, not only in telephone, but in the way communi we communicate. Probably 10, 15 years ago, this speech or story I'm reading would have been on paper, but I'm reading it from it from a screen of an iPad. Marconi, radio transmission. Edison, power generation and mass communication. Jeff Bezos, Amazon. And this is one I would Lo I always love to talk about. How many of you know Harriet Dow? Put your hands up. So what was Harriet Dow? Huh? Proprietor of the comprehensive. To me, in my talks, I always identify Harriet Dow as the most the most successful Gambian woman entrepreneur and one of the most successful entrepreneurs in our lifetime. Because Harry and Dow had a vision to build a school. She started from a small room, and 50 years later, that school is still running. She has gone, but the structure is there. Thousands of people have been trained. A lot of capacities have been built through that network. So me, I classify Harry and Dow as one of the most successful 
women entrepreneurs in the Gambia. There's another gentleman who started as a carpenter, went into construction, developed a global estate, and now is building a city. Do you know him? <laughs> But do you know he started as a carpenter? Good. But he had a vision that he followed. He did not try to get into too many things. He focused on his vision. And today, we, we can see what he's doing at Tough City. You guys should go and visit Tough City. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to story, share the story of an old man who was, to be, who was believed to be filled with wisdom. He was well respected in society where he lived. So one day, two boys came to challenge him. They had a plan. They always think that they can beat the old guy with gray hair. Not knowing that the old guy with the gray hair went through so much, he knows what they're even thinking of ahead of them. They caught two birds and went to the old man with a plan that each will hold one bird in their hands behind them and ask the old man, which of the birds in our hands is alive? Since you know which one, since you know so much. And their plan was, if the old man pointed to this gentleman, the other one would squeeze and strangle the bird to death. I mean, so they went and got this, the whole village came out to the village square. The old man was called to be disgraced by these two youthful young guys. Then he looked at the two boys holding the birds and nodded his head and responded and said, young men, the life of those birds in your hands is in your tender care. It is for you to strangle them or to let them fly. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you one thing. The future of this country is in your tender care. It is for you to mold it for us all to benefit or strangle it for us to perish. Thank you. God bless the Gambia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was a good one. Um, uh, you know, these lectures, they uh, get better by the day. Huh? Um, the first ones we had were from... Um, from we had integrity with Mr. Usain Ngom. Then we did communication with um, Hali, Honorable Halifa Sala. Commitment, sorry, commitment with Honorable Halifa Sala. So today here we are with uh, Professor Njai on uh, empathy and um, um, Mr. Jagana on futuristic vision.